Now, the, uh, the latest official crime figures show that there were over 100,000 hate crimes recorded by the police in England and Wales in one year alone. Well, hate crimes are often violent and sometimes can be fatal, something Sylvia Lancaster knows all too well after her daughter Sophie tragically lost her life after she was brutally attacked because yeah. of the way she looked. Well, tonight Coronation Street will be tackling hate crime and uh, Sophie's mother, Sylvia, has helped the writers and actress Sally Carmen to tell the story. And they both join us now. And it's... Uh, Morning. Thank you for, for, for okay. joining us. And I know, Sylvia, you've been here a, a number of times and we always start by saying, I'm sorry, it's under these circumstances. Yeah, I'm so sorry. And when you lost lovely Sophie. Um, what, was, um, what, was she, what was she like? How would you describe her? Um, quiet, introverted, quite fully. Good sense of humour, um, creative, and um, a good old egg, really, I think you'd call her. And you say that she was the sort of girl that marched to her own beat. She did, yes, yeah, she did. From, from being tiny, she was always very different. So, and did it the wrong way. So on the 11th of August in 2007, she was out, she was with a friend, and she was brutally attacked, quite simply, for being different and what, what do you know of that night? Um, I know that um, she was actually with a partner Rob and they'd been at a party and they were walking home only 20 minutes away from home that's all. Stopped at a local garage, they met two young boys, one they'd met previously and one said look at the state of them, I don't have anything to do with them and walked off. They then went to meet a bunch of young females, 14-year-old, 15-year-old females. They went with this group of females into a local skate park and uh, five young boys came in, let's bang the moshes. They attacked Rob, got him on the floor, jumped and stamped on his head mm -hmm. and Sophie went to hell and they then attacked her. Oh, so I mean, sorry. it's such a shocking crime. Um, <coughs> and, uh, and she was in hospital for 13 days and then you had to make the heartbreaking decision to turn off the life support. Um, and for the mere fact that she looked different, this gorgeous person, inside and outside, you lost. Um, and it was whilst you were walking those hospital corridors that you decided to set up the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. Yeah, I did. Um, she was, she'd been um, moved down to Hope Hospital, which is the neurological hospital in Salford. And I can remember getting there and the police were already there. I'm running through the corridors and going, right, that's it now. I've had enough. I'm going to set a charity up and we'll use our assaulted name. And um, I remember that quite vividly. And when I look back now, I think we're totally mad. And then I think it's like a displacement thing, really. Um, I, I could do that, but I could set a charity because that's a professional side. I didn't want to deal with this, what's going on in the screen. Well, you've done an incredible amount of work. You go into schools, you work with the police, you even go into festivals, but... And all of this is to, to spread the word, really, to, to tell Sophie's story, to make sure something like this never happens again, so there is more understanding. Um, and, of course, there is no greater platform than when Coronation Street knock on your door and say that they want to tell her story in one of their storylines that they have. And you worked very closely with them, and we've seen Coronation Street do this in the past, and they work very sensitively, they do their research, and you were part of that. How was it working with them? Well, it's like you said, they're very, very professional. And you can tell they sort of live and breathe the work that they're doing. And so you know that they're going to do things with sensitivity, and they're going to do the best that they can. And uh, you can't ask for any more than that. And so, Sally, um, <coughs> this is a... It, it's what Corey and the, and the other continuing dramas do very well, taking real life and, uh, and, and shining a spotlight on it in, in your own way. How important was it for you guys to get this right? Um, really important. Um... It's, it was it was it was a difficult one to do because of the weight of it and it was imperative that we did it as much justice as, as we could obviously I can only pull from my own resources and from what um, I've heard Sylvia say in the past I've heard her speak and be interviewed and I've seen black roses and 
the play that was written about that experience and lots of other things. Um, so I've drawn on my own experiences and I can't begin to imagine, but um, to, you've just got to put yourself in a place of, of empathy, I guess. And, you know, God forbid that would ever happen to anyone again, which, you know, is the whole point of bringing awareness to it. Um, it's to, just to highlight the fact that, you know, your differences don't make you any less of a person that, you know, and, and people need to remember that that could be someone's daughter, mother, um, sister, brother, whatever, uh, that underneath our differences, we're still people and we still need kindness and love. And Sally, what this storyline seems to highlight to me when, when you're watching it unfold on the telly is just how unfair this situation is. Mm -hmm. That's 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 it. I mean, the normal stages of grief. There's this sort of denial and and and, and all of that. But um, in um, Sylvia's instance, not that I would dare to even begin to speak for her or for anyone who's gone through this, because I, I couldn't possibly begin to understand it. But the shock, you know, just as an actress, trying to think of the shock of it, the unfairness of it, the 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 total end of such a brilliant light. It, I just, where do you start with that? Where, where do you go with that? Where do you pull that energy? Where do you pull that emotion? It's, it's unfathomable. It's, it's horrendous. And, um, and for you, Sylvia, um, I, you got involved. You were um, giving talks uh, to, to, the, to the cast, the actors, and to the crew, production team. So, um, so important for them. They knew they had to get it right, and so they brought you in um, because you've lived it. Um, and, uh, and more importantly, I suppose, this highlights it for your foundation. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, I mean, in particular, you know, in this year, and COVID's affected everything. Um, and obviously we've not been able to go into schools or to the festivals or whatever. Although we have still kept busy. Um, the team have been, I can't say that word, digitalising um, all our resources. So they're now all on the online. We've just got a new website on, on board last week. And um, so we are still busy doing it in a dip, working in a different way. But obviously people aren't seeing us, we're not visible. And so it's nice that people still know that, hey, oh, we're still here, we're still around, and we're still working. Mm. And so I, I guess you just hope that anyone watching this, that watches Coronation Street and, and sees that story unfold on screen, will, will just think again and think twice. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes it only takes a couple of seconds even, you know, just stand back and think a bit and... You know, let's see what we can do. Let's make a difference to people's lives. Absolutely. Thank you Thank you, you so much, Thank you. Um, Sylvia. Uh, uh, always yeah. lovely to talk to you. And Sally as well. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.